What's up, everybody? How you doing out there? Thank you for stopping by again over here at Pepe La View. I'm yours truly, Pepe. And I want to say thank you again personally for stopping by. Well, as you know, I am covering R&B Divas of the 1980s. And um, at year 1981, and then I'll cover 1980, and then I'll have covered the majority of the latest of the R&B Divas of 1980. Now, I was kind of like, uh, I don't want to do any more videos with the R&B Divas of the 1980s right now, but I just felt like I wasn't done. Like, I just wanted to post something else. And I don't know, Maxine Jones of In Vogue came to my mind. Yes, I understand she's currently not a member of In Vogue. And maybe, to be politically correct, I should say uh, Maxine Jones formerly of In Vogue. But I'm just not going to do that. She is definitely a member of In Vogue to me. So we have her here as Maxine Jones of In Vogue. And I just wanted to, you know, just cover her. And... It's kind of like, I guess, like a Christmas present in a roundabout sort of way, even though Christmas ended at midnight and it's definitely past midnight, <laughs> but I'm up and I need to go to bed, but I'm not ready to go to bed. And so I said, well, I'm going to cover Maxine Jones. Now, let's talk about Maxine Jones. I'm not going to necessarily cover all the, the other ladies of In Vogue doing this uh, video because it's definitely about Maxine Jones. Now, what do I know about Maxine Jones um, from In Vogue? Well, I definitely don't know her personally, but I have definitely followed these ladies' careers since 1989. Now, in 1989, Foster McElroy, Thomas McElroy and Denzel Foster, the guys who are the ones who put this group together, in vogue together. I remember them with the song Dr. Soul. And I recall them being on MTV, I'm not MTV, BET, Video Soul, and they were talking about in vogue. Now, I don't know if in vogue had released hold on at the time or if they was in the process of releasing it. But anywho, I remember them making mention that the ladies of Invoke was in that video, Dr. Soul. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's an interesting fact. And so moving on right from that, uh, the ladies of Invoke came out in 1990 with their debut album, Born to Sing. Now, during the time that they were coming together for In Vogue, if I understand correctly, Dawn and Maxine kind of had cross paths and Terry and Cindy kind of cross paths, paths before they actually formed the group. And it wasn't until, you know, the audition came up that they actually wanted to, uh, when they met each other, met up with each other again. Sorry about that, you guys. So now, depending on who you're talking to, and I think Max has said this a few times, I think I've heard people say that there was a lot of girls who auditioned for this group. I heard that. Then I've heard, you know, recently as in the past year or so that you actually had to be invited to the auditions like you just couldn't come you know show up like somebody somewhere had to you know invite you so i don't know if tommy and denny uh put word out to different kinds of people different uh producers or musicians or whatever and would let people know that they was holding these auditions for this girl group and i don't know if you said oh well you know joe whomever joe is <laughs> joe is not a real person but i'm just giving out a name like, well, Joe, you know, told me about the group and then they went like, oh, OK, we did tell Joe. And so you can audition. Now, I've heard uh, a similar story, but either way, the ladies came together. And from my understanding, I think Terry, no, Terry, Dawn and Maxine lived together at the time. And I guess Cindy, you know, she's, you know, stayed on her own or whatever. 
and the ladies worked on the record and everything and you know the record came together and all of that and i'm now thinking about something else about a video the ladies of in vogue is also in another tom and denny video called uh gotta be a better way and when you look at them in that video you can definitely tell that the style that they had during that video, you see in the videos definitely the style and the concept they had for, you know, coming together as in vogue when they released their album. Sorry. I'm not reading from uh, some notes or anything. This is just at the t uh, on the top of my head. Anywho, so the ladies come together as in vogue. St sticking with Max, as I said, we're talking only about Maxine. <sighs> To me, I never really paid much attention to Max in the beginning, even though I know she was there. But if you look at the way the ladies of Invo was put together, and when I say put together or placed, I'm sorry, that's a better word, placed in album covers, photo shoots, uh, even when they were side by side, it's almost like you they was placed in such a way that you paid more attention to Terry and Cindy. Sorry, but that's just the way it looked to me. But anywho, but I do recall two things that Max stood out the most to me. And that would be when they did, it was kind of like a listening party. I can't remember the title of it, but I know it was a BET show. And it was kind of like a listening party. And they performed part of me on that show. They did Hold On. They did the Hip Hop Bugle Boy, Hip Hop um, Bugle Boy song, and part of me. And I can remember when they were singing that when Max, when it was time for Max to sing, I have to be quite honest with you, Max sings with to me with a lot of conviction i mean she definitely is someone if you would say sings from the heart and her soul and her spirit she's definitely one of those uh, uh people and i could tell that when she was singing she meant every single word that she was singing versus someone else who's just probably singing because they sound great so that was one thing that I liked most about her. And then also what I liked about Max is that she did get the opportunity to showcase her vocal abilities in Lies. When they released Lies, Dawn and Cindy shared the lead. And then towards the end, Terry and, and, and Max did some ad libs. And once again, Max shows up. And as I say, she really and truly sings from the heart. And that's what I appreciate most about her. Now, as time continues to go on in this group, the ladies of In Vogue says about Maxine is that she is the one who is the one who's spiritually based. She believes in God. Uh, she's very convicted in that area. However, when I'm going to stick with Max, I'm sorry, I was about to compare her to another lady in the group, and that's not what this is about. But she sings from the heart and the soul and the mind. <laughs> she does. She, I, I, you, you can tell that she's very sincere about what she's singing. So that's what it is. Now, I, another song that I like uh, with Maxine on the Born to Sing record is Time Goes On. I like that song and I like the message behind the song. And another thing that I uh, found interesting about the song is that it has that tick tock in the back. And I always wondered, did they ever get credit for that with, with the uh, Color Me Bad? Cause Color Me Bad had a song called I Wanna Sex You Up. And I recall that it had the TikTok in it as well, but I wasn't a big Color Me Bad fan enough to buy the record back then, so I never really looked at any of the credits, but I do recall, I was like, oh, that's that in vogue, you know, TikTok in the background. So I always wondered about that. And so again, the ladies of in vogue, you know, they continue to tour, they go all around the world, of course, uh, up promoting the record and everything. And the lady shows up several times on the Arsenio Hall show. 
wow. Like I, you could just about bet that the ladies were going to be on our city hall. If I'm not mistaken, let me see. I think they performed every song on our city. They did hold on. Yes, they did lies. Oh, they looked real good in lies. If I recall correctly, they had on, on black. Yes, they had on all black with lies. And all, I mean, all of the ladies looked good. Oh, wow. All of them. And they they did. Uh, you don't have to worry. And don't go. Yes, they did. Don't go. So they performed all four songs on the Arsenio Hall show at one point in time. And so that was very awesome. But I just remember a lot about In Vogue at the time. I said this before, but it's nothing disrespectful. I know in the past it probably sounded disrespectful, but it really isn't. It's just that whenever I came across Maxine, she was always styled differently to me. It was like when the ladies were going right, she went left. I don't know what that was about uh, to me, but she always had something that was totally, totally out the box when it came to the other ladies. And it, it was fine because the ladies of Invogue, when it came to their style of dress, I think for the most part, they always dressed outside the box uh, sometime. And speaking of outside the box, I remember, if I recall correctly, that they did get a lot of backlash from how they dressed. I think it was the Arsenio Hall show and they did, uh, they performed You Don't Have to Worry. And yeah, I don't know. It was like I, I, I'm picturing gold and black. And I, this is going to sound like a diss, but it's not a diss. But it almost looked like they look kind of like clowns. <laughs> I know that's not a good word <laughs> to describe them. It's not a diss, but I don't know why it came to me. Because I'm looking at somebody's collar. Somebody's collar. Yeah, yeah, it was like, and yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think Terry had like a cape. She had like a cape or something on the back. I'm going to have to look at that uh, clip again. But anywho, but nevertheless, great performance. You can always definitely, when it came down to Invo performing um, and their choreography, I've always said that when it comes to Invo, Always, they're going to be synchronized, syncopated, choreographed, and symphonic. I mean, that's these ladies hands down. I mean, when you talk about precision, these ladies are, I mean, definitely hands down. And for the most part, if you really and truly think about it, Maxine was definitely in step with those ladies. Like she always looked like she enjoyed herself and had fun whenever she was performing. She really did. And Again, none the wiser, not thinking that, you know, of course, there's anything definitely going on within the Invoke camp that, you know, maybe the ladies didn't have, you know, they didn't, they were not all on one accord. But anyway, moving on, we're talking about Maxine. I know that's kind of difficult to do, but I'm doing this out of a tribute to Maxine Jones because I know for the most part, Maxine Jones does not talk much about the Invo camp, and I want to respect that as it relates to talking about her in this video. I do. I want to respect that. Now, I remember Silent Night, and let me tell you a little story about that. <laughs> I recall my mom asking me one Christmas what I wanted for Christmas, which would have to have been, I don't think it was the Christmas of 1990, was it? Or was it 1991? I'm not sure. But anyway, she asked me one year what I wanted for Christmas. And so I told her. And I really didn't ask for a lot as a child because the things that I wanted, I made sure that I let it be known, this is what I want, no matter how big or small it was. And so I remember telling her, oh, I want the In Vogue record, you know, the uh, In Vogue. And I'm not thinking because I don't know they have a second record out. So it would have to be between 1990 and 1991, definitely, because I'm unaware there, there's not a Funky Divas record out. And I remember going to, uh, coming downstairs and my mother handed me a box 
very small box. And of course I knew my CD was in there or, or excuse me, not my CD, my cassette was in there because I asked her for it. So I'm figuring, oh, wow, this is the Invo, you know, cassette. And keep in mind, I already had a copy of it, but I had a copy on bootleg. Okay, I'm sorry about that, but it's what it is. But I eventually got my, you know, my copy, my 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 original copy. So I paid you ladies. <laughs> I gave you ladies your money. But anyway, so I open it up and I see the case and I'm saying to myself, like, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm really not happy. I'm like, this can't be. What I asked for. And so I'm looking at it and it says in vogue remix to sing. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, <sighs> so I kind of took a deep breath, kind of, you know, did my little sigh. And I was like, oh gosh. And I didn't want to let my mom know I was disappointed. But I had to tell her, I was like, Mom, this is thank you, but this is not the one. And she was like, Well, baby, that's the only one they had in there. And I was like, Oh, okay. And you know, of course, you know, moms do. You know, she apologized, said, Babe, I'm sorry, but I tried my best. And you know, my mama didn't know. She didn't know <laughs> about the in vogue, you know, record, you know. And I didn't tell her born to sing because I knew that that was the only record out. So I thought. But anyway, I go upstairs and, you know, I start playing it and listening to it. And I was blown away. I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, these ladies can't do anything wrong. Like, it was like I liked them all over again with the remix to scene record because I never paid any attention to any remixes of anything, you know, and I, yeah, so I was like, oh, no, this, this, this here is like, what is this? Like, I was like, oh, wow. And when it came down to Lies, Lies is definitely my favorite track on the uh, remix to sing uh, CD or cassette. It definitely is. And then I get to Silent Night and I hear Max, of course, leading this record. And I was like, wow. And I'm waiting because I'm not thinking about anything. So I'm thinking about like, oh, wow, I wonder how this record did on the charts or was doing on the charts at the time. And you have to keep in mind, you guys, it's just a little tidbit about myself. I was the child that I was definitely in the television set and I was definitely watching BET and, and uh, MTV like I was there watching it. So I was always watching uh, Video Vibrations. I was watching uh, uh, Video Soul, especially Fridays. You couldn't get me to go anywhere on Fridays when it came to Video Soul. I was going to watch Video Soul and watch the top 20 countdown. Okay. And so I'm thinking like, okay, let me see if, you know, Invo Silent Night is going to pop up or something like that. And of course it didn't. But anyway, so that's where I was as well as I would go and uh, get the Jet magazines. And I was happy when my uh, grandmother finally started getting, you know, them, you know, mailed to the house because I wouldn't even read Jet magazine. I would go to the back and look at the top 20 albums and the top 20 singles at the time and just look and see. And I was, you know, at that time I was looking and seeing that what the ladies of Invogue was doing at the time. Right now, let's go back to Born to Sing since we bringing that up. I, I could recall, I was like, man, they got a number one that was for Hold On. Then I was like, man, they got a number, number one that was for Live. Then I was like, man, they got a number one. That was for you, don't have to worry. And I remember like saying to myself, I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was so disappointed when the ladies of Invogue did not get a fourth number one with Don't Go. I was like, what? I mean, it was such a great song. It was such a great song. Uh, <laughs> and it, it went to number three. It went to number three. Um, I was mad at Dunn and Simpson. I was <laughs> I was mad at record companies. I was mad at the radios. I was like, man, come on. Y'all could have gave these ladies four number ones. Like, I, I can't remember who they were competing with at the time for the number one spot with Dumb Go, but I was so disappointed that they did not get the number one spot. I was like, oh, gosh. 
And here's another thing that I just thought about too when it came to in bold. I didn't bring this up in one of my other videos, but now that I'm thinking about it, here's something else. In Vogue always had, I guess what you want to call a leading man in their videos. Like they had it in Hold On. They had those guys dancing very quickly in the videos. Then they had a man in Lies. They had a man. Now they didn't have a man and you don't have to worry. They definitely didn't. But then they had another guy in um, Don't Go. And another thing, the, the uh, someone brought to my attention, I never thought about it. There is choreography for You Don't Have to Worry, but there was not choreography in You Don't Have to Worry. In the video, You Don't Have to Worry. And I was like, I thought that was interesting that they didn't have choreography in that video. That's another thing that I love about In Vogue is the choreography. I love it. Um, I mean, those ladies, when I tell you, I know now they know because after all of these years, people probably have told them over and over again, but I'm telling you, I remember it, I was in the eighth grade. No, was it the eighth grade? No, I think I was in high school at the time, but this is how much of an impact I know the ladies had. I can remember some girls sitting beside me and I don't know what kind of event was coming up or what these particular girls was about to do. But I remember one of the girls saying, a friend of mine, Cassandra, I remember her saying, oh yeah, we're going to get us some in vogue dresses. And I knew they was talking about the black dresses, of course. And so that's what kind of impact that the ladies had. People actually wanted to dress like in vogue. I mean, those black dresses, people don't understand. I think people... You know, I just don't think they understand, which now that I'm thinking about it, speaking of the Smithsonian, they have the you don't have to. Now they have the uh, giving them something he can feel dresses as well as the my loving dresses and the uh, dresses in the Smithsonian, but not the black ones. I wonder why they don't have the black ones. People talk much about the black ones as they did the my loving in they're giving them something he can feel dresses. So I don't know why they didn't include those dresses. But anywho, but that's just how much of an impact they had. They had people wanted to wear black dresses. I mean, ladies wanted to wear black dresses. They did. And then, you know, I remember this girl named Brandy. We were um, walking down the, uh, it, no, it was after school. It was a game after school. And I know she played basketball. But anyway, I remember her singing, you know, the beginning of Hold On. She was walking down the hall, and I was like, man, she sounds just as good as these girls, you know, just as uh, good as In Vogue singing it. So uh, what I'm saying is, is that it was there. The impact was definitely there. And I think that's what everybody loved about them. I mean, I remember my brother talking about them. Like, there was... A performance. I can't remember every, I can't remember the shows, but I can remember the performances. I never forget it. I do know Sinbad is involved in this performance, meaning I think he introduced them, and it definitely was not the Apollo. I don't think it was the Apollo. But whatever it was, these uh Invo had on some blue jeans. They had on blue jeans, and I think they had like these one. They had on red and black coats, like maybe two girls had on a red coat and the other two girls had on a black coat. And I remember my brother was like talking about like how good they looked and everything like, <laughs> you know, but, you know, it is what it is. So moving right along from that, the ladies of In Vogue definitely played a major impact. Um, you know, around people that I noticed. And speaking of this, and I said this story before, and then I'm going to move right along. And of course, this is about Maxine. When the ladies of In Vogue came out, I remember my aunt telling me, uh, one of her friends uh, in our neighborhood had called her. My aunt is like five years older than me. And so she was definitely in high school. Matter of fact, no, she was out of high school. Or maybe she graduated in 1990. I think she graduated in 1990. So she was in high school. So she was in the 12th grade. And I remember being in the living room and one of her uh, friends in the neighborhood had called her to tell her that In Vogue was on Soul Train. And we turned it over, uh, put the ch uh, channel on Soul Train, and they're talking to each other. And then 
she was like, oh, you got the, she was like, I got the tape. That's what she was telling her. Like she had the tape and this and the other. And my aunt was like, oh, you got it. She was like, yeah. She was like, oh, can I, you know, hear it? And she told us she could hear it. And that's how I got my bootleg copy. So <laughs> my aunt told me to walk over there to um, her friend's house to get the uh, tape. I bring the tape back and listen to it, made a copy of it and everything and then we moved right on i again i apologize but i told y'all i eventually got my i eventually eventually paid for it because see me i wanted to be official i wanted to read those album credits i wanted to know who wrote the songs who played on the songs who engineered the project that's just the kind of person i was with music back in the day but anyway moving right along so that was my invoke story for born to sing now <sighs> So the lady shows up again and I same aunt calls me up and she tells me, she says, you know what? She was like, Invo has a new song out. I'm hearing it on the radio. So she uh, turns the song up and I'm listening over the phone, listening to the song. And I'm like, oh, OK, I, I really didn't think too much of it other than I was excited to hear that Invo had come out with a new record. It didn't even matter to me. Now, now you know, I'm working uh, <laughs> part time. I have, you know, I have me a job working part time. You know, I'm still in school or whatever, but it didn't matter to me. When I found out that Invo had a record out and my aunt told me, guess what I did? I went to the record store myself and I got a copy. I sure did. I got a copy of uh, the Funky Divas record. And I'm here to tell you, I know for a fact that when I went into the record store and just imagine like you have a rack of, of tapes, you know, and I can't tell you how tall they, how tall it was. I'm going to say, what I don't know about five, six feet. I don't know, probably even taller. And you can tell that the record was really selling because Looking at the top and looking at the bottom, like you could tell that all of Invo's record, the Funky Divas records, was definitely in that in that row, and all of them had been purchased. Because when I went, I had to reach up just to get a copy, you know, <laughs> of the record. That's how many, you know, space of uh, 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 empty spaces there were because people had bought the record. And of course, at this moment in time, I went. When I bought the record, I did what I normally would do <laughs> uh, back then, and I had a, a radio, and my speakers would detach from my radio, and I would place the uh, speakers in the window in my neighborhood, and I hit the play button, and the whole neighborhood... <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, but for real, the whole neighborhood heard that fucking Divas record that day. <laughs> I played it from beginning to the end. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So much so that I had people's like, who is that? I was like, that, and another person was like, oh, that's a new Invo uh, CD, isn't it? I was like, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Everybody was kind of like, you know, shocked and surprised that I had it, this, that, and the other. So, yes, I, 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 I had to have it. But now we're talking about Maxine. <laughs> Sorry about that, Maxine. So now we're talking about Maxine, though. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that Maxine is featured on the lead single. She was. But now that I think about it, maybe Max proved herself. Oh, I didn't think about this. Maybe we need to talk. These are questions I never thought about because I never really focused on Maxine. But notice when I said that Maxine had her own single, a lead single with Silent Night. And from my understanding, I thought that was a Tommy and Denny song, but I saw where it did say, you know, Chucky Book as well. And she did post on her Twitter page that Chucky Book will produce the song for them. And I'm wondering if maybe, you know, they saw the strength of the song, the Silent Night song, and just probably thought about maybe tailoring, you know, some songs uh, for Maxine as a lead single. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm not saying this is true, but I'm wondering because they definitely come out with My Loving, You're Never Gonna Get It, and Maxine and Dawn 
is singing lead on this record. I didn't think anything about it, but I was pleasantly surprised to see the two of these ladies singing lead on the, the first song. Like it was released in those two, especially Maxine. You saw Dawn for the most part, you know, on Lies. And, you know, she was able to, you know, stand her own for the most part and share that with Cindy, but to see Max out. And I'm sorry, Max. I hate to say this about you, but I really and truly thought <laughs> like Max had, you know, she was top heavy. <laughs> you know, in the video, I was like, Max had some big, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful. Can I say breast <laughs> I'm sorry. So I was like, oh, I'm like, Max has some pretty big breasts, you know? So anyway, uh, but I remember she said in an interview once, in a, in a publication interview, that she was like, most people think that she has big breasts, but she doesn't. I don't know. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to go there, but we are talking about Maxine Jones of In Low, by the way. So it comes out and I love it. I love the video. And to be honest, at this moment in time, as it relates to in vogue, some people can say they stepped up their game. You can some some can say that, but it had me really and truly anticipating what the next in vogue video would look like in the choreography for the songs. That's what I looked forward to with in vogue. I was just always intrigued and fascinated uh, with them with what they were going to do next. I love that. And then, of course, you know, Maxine comes out again with a, a lead single with Give It Up, Turn It Loose. And I loved it. As a matter of fact, oh, yeah, see, these stuff, they're coming back. Same aunt, we're watching BET. And here's what I liked about the BET um, interview with Donnie Simpson on Video Soul. I remember... Uh, him saying that, you know, we wanted to stay, stick around because, you know, in the next hour or so, in Vogue, there was going to have in Vogue on there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to see it. And, of course, same aunt is watching uh, BET with me at the time. And he calls them out individually. And when Max came out, I was a little disappointed, and I hate to bring this up, because I was like, why they always got to have Max at the end? Like, it was always like she had to be last for whatever reason. But what I found interesting about that particular <laughs> uh, interview as it relates only to Maxine Jones is that she never really talks much. And she didn't say much at all. And I remember when she finally said something, the three ladies turned their heads over and looked at Max like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know if they were surprised that she's actually talking or what. So I don't know. And maybe she's just that way, you know, in, in, in you know, her actual life. Maybe she just does not say a lot, you know, at all. But anyway, I was presently surprised to see her. And I really and truly liked the way she dressed. And I remember, it's a shame that I remember all this stuff. But I remember them saying at the time, and I didn't know it, that they were saying that she was a hairdresser. I'm like, what? I was like, no. I was like, Maxine, no, she's not a hairstylist. No, that's just me saying to myself. And that one day she wanted to do, you know, she would like to do Stephen Wonder's hair. But come to find out, yes, she is definitely a hairstylist. And I remember one of the ladies from uh, Old Towns 357, I think it was Terrible T. Terrible T, I was watching a, um, an interview of hers, and she actually shouted out Max's name and said, no, Terrible T of uh, Old Town 357, if you remember them, back in the MC Hammer camp, said, no, Maxine, she, I think she said Max did her hair or uh, was her hairdresser at one point in time. But anywho, moving on from there, Pleasantly surprised to see Max, you know, finally out in the forefront. And she definitely did it. I mean, like, like I think this is when, for me, Max moved from the front back to the front. And I was so happy to see that. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's just Max as she is, or rather who she is. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm out. All right. 
let me do my thing. I'm out. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm back to, you know, being where I am. I do my thing back here. And maybe she's the one who just didn't want to, I guess you could say rock the boat. Maybe that's what it was. You know, maybe, you know, she understood, you know, her place in the group. Maybe she was like another Mary, what's her name? A Mary Wilson in the Supremes, you know, but we, we were talking about Maxine, but you know, they Mary Wilson in the Supremes. You know, she she definitely understood her role when it came to Diana. Like, I understand this is what y'all want with her. It's not necessarily I like it, but, you know, if that's what you want, that's fine. Just make sure you give me a third of what she make and I'm good, you know, but I'm not going to say that's what Maxine's position on everything. But at the same time, you know, I think she's very comfortable, I guess, in whatever part she has to play in for the Born to Sing as well as the Fucking Divas album. So I remember that. And now at this moment in time, everybody is aware around me that I am an In Vogue fan. I mean, I'm a fan. Like, I love them. Like, In Vogue cannot do anything wrong. And my grandmother, at this moment in time, she found out that I, In Vogue and Arrested Development was not from, I didn't hear anything about it, but she was like, I'm hearing that In Vogue is going to be performing here. I was like, huh? I was like, my hometown? Not that there's anything wrong with my hometown. It's just that I was like, okay, if you say so, because we never had any concerts like that in my hometown. You know, we had it, you know, um, up the road <laughs> from, from us, you know, but never in my hometown. But of course, I, I have a major college in my hometown. But again, that's where they were supposedly going to perform in the auditorium at the at the college, you know, which is, you know, pretty well known college, you know, for the most part. And so I was like, oh, OK. And she's like, I'm going to give you some I'm gonna buy tickets for you. But whatever the case, whatever happened, it fell through um, in vogue and the rest of the development did not perform. And it is what it is. I wasn't terribly disappointed because I was still in high school. And even though I was going to be excited to see them, it it didn't matter you know, if I did or didn't. And now in Vogue with the Funky Divas record, as I said, they're all over the place. I'm loving Maxine. Um, all things Maxine. Maxine has, for me, gone from being uh, the one in the back that I didn't know much about to the one in the front. And I was like, wow. And I'm thinking that you have now these two Records have been released, Born to Sing and Funky Divas, Terry and Cindy. They're, you know, for the most part, all seen lead on all of the singles released from that record. And Dawn and Maxine sings lead from all of the songs on the second record. I think it's kind of like evened up that for the next record, these ladies <laughs> were going to definitely command a lot of attention on that third record. I just knew it. I, I was ready for it. And, well, I guess it just really wasn't, you know, in the cards to happen that way. Now, I don't recall much about In Vogue, hearing anything much about In Vogue at the time, except for, oh gosh, sorry to bring this up, that Luther Vandross incident. I don't really want to talk much about that other than, you know, I was on the side of En Vogue and had always been on the side of En Vogue. And at this moment in time, I can recall uh, Tommy and Denny saying that they had created a Franken Vogue. <laughs> yes, a Franken Vogue, uh, you know, like a monster, but not in a, I don't think they meant it like, it wasn't in a disrespectful way. It was just basically, you know, these ladies are, you know, they at a level now you know, you got men passing out in concerts and all of that stuff, and you don't really see see that. And, you know, these ladies, well, when it comes to dealing with another diva in the business, <laughs> you know, and who has a reputation of being a diva in the business, when it relates to other artists, I guess what he, they were basically saying is you're going to, you, you, I mean, there, it's another monster, you know, in, in the clash between the two camps happened. I always sided with En Vogue, and I think I sided with En Vogue more so because, well, Luther Vandross did it with a 
Anita Baker. He did it with Aretha Franklin. And I expected everything to go smoothly with In Vogue. I did. I was like, I knew that there was definitely a concert that I wanted to attend. But, well, it never really happened. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. It didn't happen. And everybody went their separate ways. And, of course, I guess you could say since In Vogue signed a contract, maybe on that end, it would look as if the late ladies of In Vogue lost. But, for you to put a contract in these ladies' face that they couldn't wear certain colors and certain dresses that would compete with your background singers and with you, you already knew what you were doing in the first place. To go and tell a group such as Invo, who has created an image, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and then to tell them that they can't be the brand that they're creating because they don't, you don't want them to upstage your ladies in, 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 in your group or your band or whatever. It was just totally a slap in the face to the ladies. I would like to think that the ladies of In Vogue were probably saying to themselves, okay, we think, well, okay, we can think we can kind of make it work, but realize, no, this is definitely not working. We thought we could do it. But it's not working. And so pretty much moving on from there, I think that's the part that was disappointing, you know. But I thought what was tacky, what was tacky to me, I don't know if you guys remember, but of course I'm in the television set. I don't know if you remember that. I think during the, was it the Funky Divas record? It wasn't EV3. I think it was the Funky Divas record. I remember in Luther Vandross either introducing the ladies to perform or 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 giving them an award or was it vice versa? Was it the ladies of In Vogue? Did they do an in um a uh, uh, a reward? I mean, an award presenting an award to Luther Vandross. Either way, I thought that was very tacky. I thought that was very tacky. Oh, speaking of which, I also remember on <laughs> the Arsenio Hall show when Arsenio Hall um, had them on the show for the concert. Well, when they was um, on the tour with Luther Vandross and they had them on there. And I remember, I think the ladies, it was either an anniversary cake or a happy birthday cake that they presented to Arsenio Hall. And I remember Dawn had this smirk on her face when, when Luther was on, uh, was, was standing in front of them. But I never thought much about it. I didn't think there was any beef in the camp or anything. But I did say to myself, I was like, why is it that in Vogue and Luther are not interacting with each other and they're not and they're on tour together. I just figured they would have more, you know, proximity to each uh, to each other. But they didn't. And another thing that was disappointing, though, is that the ladies of In Vogue, I've never seen them perform Runaway Love, which, again, was a, another song. So you didn't hear much out of In Vogue at the time. And then they come up with the single Runaway Love, and they do with, uh, with the Born to Scene record what they was going to do with uh, what they did with the Born to Scene record they did with the Funky Divas record. Um, and I, I thought it was decent. I, 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 I liked it. I don't think I liked it as much as Remix to Scene, but I definitely liked it. Uh, but I was definitely a fan of Runaway Love. And to hear that they didn't tour. Now, from my understanding, I could be wrong, but... I was under the impression that the ladies of In Vogue was like, well, we don't want to perform on Arsenio because we was getting too much exposure or something like that. Now, that's what was in, you know, in the tabloids. But I was saying to myself, I was like, how could the ladies of In Vogue say they're getting too much publicity? And that's the reason why they didn't want to perform on Arsenio Hall's show. But I'm moving on from that. I'm not the one to gossip, so you ain't heard that from me. But I was saying to myself, like, that's just totally interesting. Though, and another thing that was interesting that I thought about uh, that came up 
is that in the ladies of in vogue receive the Sammy Davis Jr. Award for Entertainers of the Year that year. And um, word on the street was like people saying they didn't think in vogue really deserved that record. You know, I'm just saying, I mean, that award. But, you know, I, but that shows you what kind of moves the ladies of Envo was making at the time. I mean, to have the Entertainer of the Year, Sammy Davis Jr. Award for Soul Train Music Award, and then to have all of these um, nomination for, what do you call it? Um, MTV Video Music Awards. I mean, these ladies were definitely contenders like they were about to really make a move in the industry and for whatever reason it just did not turn out to be that way but anywho it is what it is i'm just saying and that's it but now here's the thing even though we're talking about maxine and we're probably about i think i'm going to stop this uh, within the hour, and I'm going to do the, another hour solely on Maxine. I'm going to try to, but I guess this would be the backstory. But anywho, so I recall that Terry and Dawn was on the American Music Awards, and they were in a category for Runaway Love. They get up to present the award, and it was either Terry or Dawn. One of them was like, well, Max and... Cindy, they're not here because I, they either said they're busy making them mothers or aunts. I'm not quite sure what it was. And I remember saying, oh, my gosh, they're pregnant. That's what I was saying. But I, I was thinking that it was Cindy and not Maxine, you know, who was pregnant. But then shortly after that, shortly after that, I mean, really, I think like the next day, you know, because people started gossiping. So the next day, I remember on the radio. One of the DJs said on the radio, they was like, hey, you know, we're hearing that the ladies of Invoke, they, they broke up. <laughs> I was like, what? So I was disappointed. You know, that's when I was hearing rumors about the ladies of Invoke uh, being, you know, that there were some things going on in the Invoke camp. It was after they received that Runaway Love uh, American mu Music Award uh, trophy. That's when I started, you know, hearing the rumor mill. But anyway, moving right along from that, it is what it is. <laughs> um, now, so we wait patiently, very, very patiently for Invo. Now, I think this is going to be a good place to talk about this, and that's movies are coming out, right? Movies are coming out, uh, the, these movies with soundtracks. And I remember saying to myself, I was like, where is In Vogue? Like, why is In Vogue, or why these ladies are not on any of these soundtracks? Here's one soundtrack that I was totally, totally like disappointed. Like if I was ever disappointed about In Vogue not being on a particular soundtrack. And I don't think y'all realize this is how just much I really like this group. But when they released the um, Waiting to Exhale soundtrack and In Vogue was not on that soundtrack. As a matter of fact, let me go and look and see because I know there were other girl groups on this soundtrack. So, and I think it was a group called, was it For You? They even stole the girl's name. Was it For You? There was a group of girls called For You on the soundtrack. Let me see who was on this soundtrack. Track listing, let me see. Was it For You? For real, that's it. I knew it was a for something. And, and I was like, listen, you girls was not original. Like y'all know In Vogue was called For You and y'all want to call yourselves For Real. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so when I saw For Real and SWV and TLC on the uh, soundtrack, the in, uh, the Waiting to Excel soundtrack, I was totally disappointed. It, there's, there's no need for me to lie at all. I thought those ladies should have been on that soundtrack. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess I got my question answered. I see probably why. The record was released in 1995. And since we're talking only thing about all things Maxine Jones, we're not going to talk about who released the record in that group in 1995. We're just not going to do it. It's not a diss, but I'm trying to stick with Maxine Jones. 
house. Okay. So, well, at this moment in time in 1995 or whatever the case may be, we know Max is having a baby, right? Uh, let me go. Let me look and see. Let me go over here to the info account. And let me see when was Runaway Love. Runaway Love was released in 93 or 94. But let me make sure. I just want to make sure. When was Runaway Love? It's not saying. Oh, my gosh. Well, let's go to the single. It was released in 93. It was released in 93. So, but there was, uh, a, like I said, I was still disappointed that the ladies of Invo was not on the Waiting to Excel soundtrack or any soundtrack for that matter. And for them to have been such a mega group at this time that they were not on any of these movie soundtracks totally disappointed me, which now when they came back in 1997, I believe it was, was it 97 with Don't Let Go Love and they were on the... Um, uh, set it off soundtrack. I was like, yes, the ladies are back. I remember in an article that Max had said that the group is, you know, they're refreshed, they're rejuvenated, are the words that she used, uh, according to this, you know, particular magazine, and that the ladies are just ready to get back to performing again. And, you know, the song is all over the place. People are loving the song. Uh, I mean, people are loving it. I mean, they're loving it so much so that when I'm in different, you know, circles and what I mean by circles around different people, that song is being mentioned. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that, that, that song is great. And you know me, I'm playing it. And so as I'm playing it, people who are coming around me are saying, yeah, I like that. And I think that In Vogue, uh, Don't Let Go Love was a great song sound wise to reintroduce the ladies because I still say free your mind definitely helped cross these ladies over definitely uh, gave them that pop rock audience that they needed and I think that that's what they got with the um, don't let go love I think it was re them being reintroduced to that audience yet again well we are at the 52 mark and I don't want to be uh, I don't want to have to upload, take too long to upload another video. So this is where I'm going to stop with this particular uh, part of Maxine uh, video, because what I want to do now is instead, of course, what you're about to, we're about to go into is see that Maxine is about to make a transition, you know, out of in vogue and all that. And I just want to talk about all the good things that are going on as well as, you know, the solo projects that she has. She has a solo project out, Maxine Jones featuring Big Frida, Not Your Freak. Yes. So, um, great place to stop. At this time, I want you to go ahead on and hit the like, share, and subscribe button as well as leave a comment. Yes, I do. And also, I want to let you know that over here at Pippi La View, we believe in people putting their behind where their heart desires to be. Yes, that's right. And that's a good place uh, uh, for us to bring up Maxine because that's exactly what she's doing. She's putting her behind where her heart desires to be. And, you know, anybody who knows that, I can probably say Maxine does. And remember, Whenever I leave my mother's presence, she says to me, she says, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you what next video.